Wow, Teofimo Lopez tells Top Rank, please do not set me up with that, quote, bum, Arnold Barboza Jr. This was immediately after he had defeated Pedro Campa. Does this make any sense to you? That's what I want to talk about in this video. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. SLC, subscribe, like, and comment. Now, Top Rank, they just released some behind-the-scenes BTS stuff with Teofimo Lopez and I gotta admit what was stated was very bizarre I will explain exactly why I feel that way in this video now Teofimo just won his fight a comeback fight after losing to George Cambosos he lost to Cambosos and he lost in a major way he was at home in New York abysmal performance later a lot of damage control and in my opinion excuses as to what went wrong and all these medical ailments, they said he had asthma, he had arthritis, or you know, whatever it was. His esophagus is, it exploded. And none of that takes away from the actual outcome, which is George Cambosos beating him convincingly and dropping him in the first round because of how he fought, and then later losing to Devin Haney, which he'll rematch October 15th. Now, Top Rank posted this video. It says, the title of the video is, Don't Set Me Up with that bum Barboza. Lopez calls shot after Campa victory. Real time epilogue. And just a quick side note, I find it very funny that you see a lot of the PBC detractors who talk bad about PBC and you know support everybody else outside of premier boxing champions, but then you see blatant like copying and ripoffs with the style of content that PBC produces. Like when have we seen top rank do real-time epilogues you know i the the place where i seen the epilogue was on showtime you know mayweather versus canelo and they've been doing the epilogue for years so i just found that funny now they're rele releasing this supplemental additional content and it literally says epilogue just like showtime and i just find that funny now back to teofimo lopez in this clip, Teofimo, he says, don't set me up with that bum Arnold Barboso Jr. He's adamant about not fighting Barbosa to the top rank officials or VPs or whoever he was talking to. I didn't quite see from the video. And I thought that was a bit weird. And I'm going to explain why. He says, but please do not set me up with that bum over there, Arnold Barboza, right? I need bigger fish. It's a waste of my time. And he's clearly saying that to the matchmaker or who, whoever that works with top rank. Now, this is very bizarre to ego for many reasons. For starters, the, the simplest or the one that comes like to mind quick is this is an epilogue behind the scenes. You broke your losing streak, you know, the Camboso loss. You got a victory. They showed on the top ranked ESPN telecast that Arnold Barboso Jr. was in the crowd as an interested spectator. Obviously, Teofimo's moving up to that division, and you know, he's been wanting to fight Teofimo. There are even rumors that Teofimo, that could be his first fight at 140, Arnold Barboza Jr., right? So just I'm setting the stage so you guys can maybe see through the set of lenses that I looked at this as. So Teofimo coming off Camboso loss, you defeat Pedro Campa by stoppage, first fight in the new division, and post fight, you see the top rank matchmakers or VPs or whatnot, and you're concerned with somebody who's in the crowd, and as it relates to your next opponent. I find that pretty shocking. Now, I could maybe understand if, let's say, Jerron Ennis, he fought on the, I think it was the Charlo undercard, Charlo Castano 2 undercard, and Jerron Boots Ennis has been trying to work his way up in position. Errol Spence went to see and support his boy, Charlo, for Charlo Castano 2, stable mate, friends, gym mates, and Jerron Ennis is supposed to be the IBF mandatory. And the Castillo Clayton fight would would secure that. So I could understand Jerron Ennis 
looking in the crowd, seeing Errol Spence Jr. was there, and he says something to the effect that I'll, he's the big fish, I want to reel him in. That's a call out. You're seeing someone in the crowd and you're like, yeah, that could be my next person. I want smoke. I'm the mandatory. Right. So in that sense, I can understand maybe being preoccupied with the card. But what Teofimo Lopez Jr. did was the polar opposite. You seen someone in the crowd after your victory and you tell your promoters on tape, on camera, don't match me with that particular person. Another reason why this looks extremely bizarre, how bizarre, how bizarre, is Arno Barbosa has a record of 27-0, and he's undefeated. He's no blemish on his record. He did have a tough fight. I think he fought a Puerto Rican dude. He was wobbled in that particular fight, but he remained undefeated nonetheless. 27-0, 10 knockouts, and he's age 30. He's been calling you out, and you make... A consorted effort to let your promoters know you don't want to fight him that's really weird again 27 and 0 he's undefeated you just got to this division and he's saying i got bigger fish to fry and don't match me with that bum barboza puts a lot of pressure on him the other question is how can you fight a guy who's never fought out of mexico more than two times they said he fought out of Mexico one time, and that was Pedro Campa. And you have no problem with top rank matching you with Pedro Campa and putting you in the ring because literally the epilogue was showing post-fight victory after he knocked out Pedro Campa. So me personally, I don't get into the business of calling fighters bums and stuff. You, you seldom, if ever, see me really say that. You know, support and respect to the guys that lace him up. So I'm not going to call Pedro Campa out of his name. But I will say that at the end of the day, Pedro Campa, I had never seen him before. He's an unknown, unheralded name who fought really domestically back home in Mexico. And he had only fought outside of Mexico one time. And he had no good or big names on his resume. He had no significant wins. He had already taken a loss to a guy who was like 11 and 8, 11 and 9, something like that, and almost had, you know, a matching win versus loss, 11, and you have eight losses. That's that's almost a 50-50 record, right? And that guy knocked Pedro Campa out, and you had no problem with top-ranked officials and matchmakers putting you in with Pedro Campa, but then you go out of your way after beating Campa to steer clear and say you don't want to fight Barbosa Jr., I don't think that's a good look. And I understand that Top Rank kind of bit the Showtime epilogue series, but when I watched the, let's say, Errol Spence versus your Dennis Ugas Showtime epilogue, it's it makes you respect Errol Spence, especially the victor. It makes you respect him even more because you've seen the punches and you have a good feeling. And if anything, it builds the reputation, it builds the brand of Errol Spence Jr. or whoever, Floyd Mayweather, or when Madonna beat Broner or whoever, it, it makes you respect that person, Canelo versus Caleb, Caleb Plant or whoever. It makes you respect what they did on that night and you're generally thinking about the fighter in a positive light. But for whatever reason, this epilogue with Tio Fimo, I don't think that really helps his stock, for instance. I don't think that benefits him because it looks, to me, it looks bad that they were trying to make this fight and that was widely reported. If I'm not mistaken, Carl Moretti was talking about it on Twitter, who's a top-ranked person and matchmaker, and you don't fight him to fight Pedro Campa. You're willing to fight Pedro Campa, who'd been stopped before, but you're making it known that you can't fight Barbosa because you have bigger fish to fry. So honestly, a lot of what Teofimo and his dad say, it just seems a bit outlandish. One time, you know, it just can't be trusted. They were saying that they're going to fight and fight on pay-per-view two, three times this year. Well, guess what? We're nearing the end of the year. As of me recording this video, it's almost September and Teofimo has not fought. He just fought. And he hasn't been on pay-per-view since. So how are you going to fight on pay-per-view two or three times? Then they're saying Madison Square Garden in December. 
And he's like saying, oh, I got bigger fish to fry, but who's he gonna fight? We know more than likely, Tio Fimo is not gonna get a New York fight against the likes of Gervonta Tank Davis. So it just adds a lot of pressure to Tio Fimo because if he's not fighting a Tank Davis or Ryan Garcia or Josh Taylor, then it makes no sense to isolate and ISO Arnold Barbosa Jr., which is a solid fight, and single him out and say, yeah, I don't want to fight that bum. So Teofimo, him and his dad, they continue to talk and they add more pressure to their situation because at the end of the day, if you fight anyone with a lesser record or less known or less of a money fight than Arnold Barbosa Jr., if you fight another Pedro Campa, it's going to look extremely bad. SLC, subscribe, like, and comment. Let me know how I did in this video. What do you think of Teofimo's recent comments? Drop that in the comment section. And I'm out. Introducing Super Thanks. Right here on the official Boxing Ego YouTube, Super Thanks allows you, the viewers, to show a little bit of extra gratitude, which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing. Underneath all the videos, you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it. You can enter any amount that you find suitable as a Super Thanks. A brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself, but other people on the YouTube platform. Super thanks, a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators. Hopefully you guys enjoy the content. Super thanks. The future is now. The Hibernation 5s by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it.